I'm Mike Wong. And I'm John Kimball. We are here today at Rockwest Composites because I am interested in building a telescoping tube. You could use it for a selfie stick, like maybe when I accept my Emmy Award. <laughs> Uh, maybe I want to tag a whale, wash windows three stories up. Yeah. I don't know, you can do a lot with a telescoping tube, yeah, right? You could. All right. Here at Rock West, we have just that ability to make your own telescoping tubes. This is an example of one that we have uh, on display. Compression fittings, tighten and loosen. You can make this as long as you want to. Behind yeah. us, we can see a, a couple of different examples of just how versatile the compression fitting is. To get started, we need a few things. We need tubes that telescope together. The compression fitting is a three-part system with a low friction UHMW ring, a wire brush, and a Dremel tool. We'll need adhesive, the gun system that Rockwest sells, mixing tips, this is an optional item, a cardboard surface to mix resin on, some sandpaper, glass beads used for bond line control, masking tape and some low friction tape as well. Cleanup is necessary so we have some alcohol and some rags, you can use acetone, MEK, anything that you want. So John, what's the first step in building a telescoping tube? Well as you know, the first step is always safety. So we need glasses and gloves. We gotta take our big tube, Yep. because that is where our compression fitting that we bond on fits on the big tube. Okay. It will not fit on the small tube. We are going to mask off the area so that we don't scratch our nice pretty tube, but we also need to prepare it so that the, the epoxy will bond properly. That makes sense. So take that tape and, and wrap it, and it doesn't have to be perfect, but you can just put it about a sixteenth of an inch away from the end of the fitting. Pretty. My mom said I was pretty. <laughs> <laughs> we have to prepare this surface now, so we have to take off all the shine okay. so that the epoxy will bond properly. The epoxy will not bond properly to smooth surfaces. We've got some sandpaper here for you. You can take that and... Just sand away? You can just sand it. I mean, that's probably like 30 seconds of sanding. Yeah. Is that all we need to do? Pretty much. A little alcohol little to help clean it, yep. clean it off. Just squirt some in there and rub it off and that'll show you if you have any shine on there. Now we need and to sand off the, the inside. anodizing off the inside of that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the wire brush and a Dremel tool to okay. make it really fast and really easy. Aluminum dust and anodizing dust, probably not great to breathe, so let's put our masks on. All right. Yeah. We're gonna take it down to the aluminum. Make it shiny. It looks pretty good, but there's still some black in there, you can see, so we need to take all the black off if we can. Let's wipe it down with some alcohol. The next thing we need to do, though, is we need to give it just a little bit more bite, a little more teeth. So we're gonna take our 80 grit sandpaper and just scuff it around there a couple of times and just make sure that it's got some nice scratches in it. Our next step, Mike, is to mix the adhesive so that we can bond the two parts together. Okay, and adhesive is simply a glue of some sort, right? It is, it's a two-part epoxy system. Okay. This particular epoxy is good for bonding dissimilar materials together, like aluminum and carbon fiber. So we have this uh, application gun, exactly. looks like. So this you way. can put it through that way. And you push it all the way to the bottom. Okay, slide this through there. There you go. Okay, and then just locks in. And then locks in place, make sure it locks. Yeah. Now you're ready to dispense. One other thing that I should mention though, if we have a wiggle in here and we bond it at an angle, then our tubes won't slide together very well. Okay, that's where the glass beads come into play. That, exactly. Mm-hmm. So we have some glass beads here. Okay. We have several different diameters to choose from. These are the .004 beads, and that will take up the space in between the carbon tube and the aluminum fitting and hold it centered on the tube. So I just crack off the tip here? 
a little twist. So is this mixing tube really necessary? It's not absolutely necessary, but it's the best way to get efficient mixing of the materials and you don't introduce air into it when you mix it. Okay, so you mentioned we gotta dispense this onto our table. Yep. And then the next thing is, how much of the resin bead should I add to the mix? You're supposed to put in two to 3% by weight, but since we'll be mixing so little resin today, it will be hard to, to weigh that out. So we're just gonna mix it to feel. Uh, you don't want to mix in so much that you get a paste. Yeah but you still want to be able to see and feel the beads um, as you run a stick over it. Mix the two together, kind of fold it over the top of it and mix it in. Can you feel the grittiness at all? We definitely can, yeah. It looks like I can just barely see the beads in there. Okay, once it's mixed on the board, yeah. we have two hours to work with it. It takes 24 hours to completely cure but it should start hardening uh, to the touch or at least getting tacky after about two to two and a half hours. Take the large one and we're going to take our popsicle stick there yep. with a little bit of resin on it, touch it to the part and smear it around. You don't want to put it all the way down to the edge all right? because when you put the fitting on, the fitting will actually push some of that resin down to the edge. It's also important to have the surface wetted out except for the bottom because that will guarantee that the entire surface has epoxy bonded to it. We're gonna do the same to our fitting. Use a little bit less on this one and do the same. Don't cover, don't go all the way down to the end. You'll take these two pieces, you'll slide it over it. Now I noticed that we actually have quite a bit of extra resin that got squeezed out. So what you can do here is you can take your, your stir stick yep and you can just scrape a little bit, you can scrape what you can off of there. Yeah, so you really don't need a lot of resin to do you this. You don't, you yeah. don't need very much. We also want to look at the inside. You can't have a bead on the inside because that will limit the other tube from sliding through. When we're done cleaning it up, then we can take that tape off and let us, and make sure when you do this, yeah. that you don't get any resin on the threads. So let's give you a little more alcohol and then just clean up the top of the threads there just in case. It's gonna take a while to cure unless we can put some heat on it, but we're just gonna let it sit there. You can take a piece of masking tape and tape over the top of it if you wanna make sure that it doesn't slide, or if you can set it upright, that will also do the, the job for you. Mm. That part is bonded. We just have to wait for it to cure. <laughs> All right, so now we're working on the second half. Right. Okay, we don't need our gloves for this. We're not using any more epoxy. How do we guarantee that the smaller tube doesn't slide out? We're gonna solve two problems with one thing. This Teflon tape gives us a nice snug fit that slides in and out of the other tube. Okay. And it also prevents the tube from pulling out too far when you extend it. First thing we wanna do is make sure we don't have any dust on that. Clean it up, make sure there's no dust on there or grease. Next, we need to take some of this tape. We need three strips for what we're doing. All right. And you can just rough measure it around the tube. It doesn't need to go all the way around. They have double back tape on them, so we have to remove the tape before we can put it onto the part. And then how do I wanna apply them? You wanna apply them um, one uh, towards the end. Yep. And then about an inch apart for each one of the remaining. You can go shorter if your uh, assembled tubes are relatively short and you're only extending a couple of inches, maybe five, six inches. So you can have two pieces of tape instead of three. Ooh, and that, that's a little overlap there. a little there, over, so, so you can trim that down. Trim that back down, don't want that. If you do have a gap here, mm -hmm. just make sure that the next piece is 180 degrees from that. But before we assemble this, we'll want to make sure all the edges are pushed down really tight okay. so we don't snag any edges. That's good. And that piece is ready to go. All right, so we got the compression fitting bonded. Right. I have the tape on the smaller tube. Correct. What do I do now? We need to take out the tape here, clean it up. So this is where you take the smaller tube and it slides into the larger tube. Slide that in and then very carefully work it in, maybe twist it a little bit, push it all the way through. Aha, uh -huh, voila. Now watch what happens when you pull that all the way through. It reaches the end. It stops. It stops. We have to assemble the other pieces onto the onto the fitting. So the first piece you put on is the compression fitting. Okay. Slide and that on butts there. up against that end. And then we take the other threaded piece, slide it over. 
twist it in place. And when it snugs up, it's ready to use. Imagine that. <laughs> Magic. Man, if I want to. Exactly. This is genius. It's easy. Genius, right? John. <laughs> And then we just repeat the process? You repeat the process for each one of the sections that you want to do. Imagine this piece here. You do that process one at a time for each one of these sections or do it all at once if you have the, if you think you can do it. Okay.